and firstly, can I just say it's it's so wonderful to be to be joined by you all here. Um, I think it's really nice that we have this hybrid environment and we have um, cameras going everywhere. <laughs> we have the opportunity to kind of discuss uh, in this format. I know we're not, you know, it kind of has the best of both worlds where we have in person, but we can be connected all over the world, which is it's really nice and I think kind of gets to um, accessibility and, and other issues, which is great. Um, so first, I, I really want to, you know, thank everyone for what I've heard so far and, and thank you for these questions and also the thoughtfulness of these questions. I, I really like how you how you phrase that. Um, how can we build faith and trust in both institutions and the capacity of young people? Because I think we're very quick to assume sometimes that we must put in all of this effort to build young people's capacity before they can enter into these spaces and, and vice versa but that's not really the case often young people are, are ready you know they have the tools they have the capacities um and it's it's more so sometimes about access um you know time and time again we we see this in different fora you know uh, the wps agenda is, is one such example we we sometimes assume that uh, women aren't at the table because they don't want to be and, and all of these very tired excuses, which is just not very true or accurate. It's about ensuring that there's, you know, the political will to, to put them there. You know, we see that young people are ready to engage. They're out in the streets. They're protesting for the issues that they care about, whether that's reproductive rights or climate justice or, or racial justice. Um, and I think we need to sort of have a, a paradigm shift as to how we think aren't there for a box ticking exercise um you know they're there to help meaningfully contribute and you know both kind of help transform these institutions but also to advance the structures that are already in place to better respond to their needs and to respond to the needs of future generations because when we're talking about something like climate justice and climate action that's definitely something that um, is going to apply to them most. So I think from the outside, having that area respected is really key to building trust and faith. Having that trust and faith in, in, in young people. Um, you know, there's definitely a few things that both the UN and international institutions and governments are doing well, but, but could be doing better. Um, and when I was thinking about this question, I actually reached out to Ireland's two youth delegates, uh, Deandra and Tressa, who are doing really excellent work in this space. And Deandra got back to me and she noted that she felt sometimes the UN were, was doing a lot of good work, but maybe they weren't just kind of making that last jump to be really accessible to young people. Um, you know, she noted that the UN uses a lot of jargon. <laughs> And uh, as someone, I don't even want to think about the amount of acronyms I have had to learn since joining the UN space a few years ago, but, you know, it's something that we kind of get wrapped up in when you're in the institution for too long and forget that it can be a little bit off-putting. And it's not about a case of simplifying the language, it's about, you know, just making sure that what we're talking about is just more widely understandable, and maybe the platforms that we're using are more widely accessible to, to young people and the audiences we're, we're trying to reach. Um, similarly, if we're, we're seeking to give young people more opportunities to train and learn about the UN and these institutions, they need to be accessible. As, as we've said, you know, a lot of young people have the appetite to jump into it, but they might just be encountering barriers, whether that's financial or, or physical or geographical. Um, I mean, for one, one thing for me, and, and something you know, in my personal capacity, I definitely experienced was things like unpaid internships. You know, it's it's very difficult for young people to bridge that gap if they don't have the the financing available to them. Um, I know you you pointed out a few ideas about um, my national experience in the government of Ireland, and I think within the climate action space in particular, we've been doing some really interesting work to try and. Uh, really work with young people and, and harness their activities because we, we recognize that you know movements like Fridays for Future and other things have been really advancing this area. So um, one such thing uh, in the national level we have a youth climate justice fund so that's something that is helping finance and support youth led action on climate on climate change and, and climate justice at the local national and regional levels. 
Um, we also have a National Youth Climate Assembly, which is where we brought together young people to talk about their ideas with policymakers, with government ministers, and politicians, and to give them that space to advance that. Um, on the international level this year at COP26, uh, we financed and supported 10 young uh, youth delegates and women delegates to attend, and that included both sort of training to I guess acclimatized to the, the UN speak, I suppose, and um, ensure they were familiar with that environment, but also just to give them to open that door, essentially. So there are a few ideas from our background, a few ideas from what I think we maybe sometimes overlook, um, but I think this is some really good initial steps to, to build that mutual trust.